Hello guys and this is Scott here and today, I bet you couldn't guess, I've got another historic video for you. And in this one I'm going to be doing the very forgotten cold winter of 1985-1986. Now this is an interesting winter because as I said it's a very forgotten one. The uh, February of this winter, February 86, is a very cold month but it's not remembered very much at all. Um, and there's also a very cold November as well, which I'm going to show you. So, before I get started, I'd just like to say that a lot of the facts and figures that you hear in this video come from Trevor Harley's personal weather website. He um, has detailed facts and figures of many months going back to the early 19th century in detail and even, you know, smaller fragments of information going back to the birth of Christ. So that's, you know, a very good... A very good resource and you should definitely check it out if you want to see some information about specific weather months. And also the uh, charts that you see in this video come from wettercentral.d. They have an archive of charts going back to January of 1871, can you believe? So as I say in all my videos, if you want to uh, suggest a um, historic video, you can pick anything starting from January 1871 and I can have a look for the facts and figures and make a video about it. So let's get on with the winter of 1985-86. So we're going to start on the 31st of October 85, Halloween. And actually you can see that it looks quite interesting right off the bat there. Um, we have high pressure out in the mid-Atlantic and low pressure over Scandinavia. So the UK is under a very, very gentle northerly there. So, it was quite a chilly Halloween, this, um, quite a chilly and benign Halloween. But as we go through to the 1st of November 1985, and you can already see that we're, we're threatening to turn it quite cold, really. Um, and as I said at the start of the video, November 1985 is a very cold November, in fact, it's the coldest since 1919, and it has a central England temperature of 4.1 Celsius. Um, and it's made notable really for a cold spell towards the end of it. But as you'll see here, it does threaten little cold snaps. So the month actually does start off quite mild, but here we do get a, you know, a little bit of a gnarly here. So as we go through the 2nd of November, you can see that that high pressure actually retrogresses right up to Greenland. And we bring quite a potent northerly down there on the 2nd. So... That brings temperatures down quite a bit. But it doesn't really last long because as we go through into the third, we have low pressure in the Atlantic that quickly cuts it off. So a very, very short lived no a uh, very short lived northerly there to start off November. And then as I said, we go a little bit milder through the fourth and the fifth of November. So we get quite a wet and stormy bonfire night there. And that carries on really as we go into the 6th, we get quite a northwesterly gale there. So, you know, feeling very, very raw for early November. And as we go through the 7th and into the 8th, we pretty much keep that trend really into the 9th. Um, before another little gnarly actually develops around the 10th of November. And this is where it starts to get a little bit more interesting. Because as we go through the 10th and into the 11th of November... You can just about see that the um, high pressure out in the mid-Atlantic is slowly building into the UK, but it's building into cold air there as the cold air is brought down from the pole. So as we go through to the 12th and the 13th of November, we actually start to see some pretty chilly nights. And actually overnight 13th and into the 14th of November, we actually record minus 8 Celsius in parts of the southeast. So we actually get, you know, a pretty severe frost for this time of the year, time of the year, especially in the south. Um, and that's basically just because we have this really slack high pressure over us. But as we go through into the 15th of November, you can actually see that the Azores High ridges up to Scandinavia there. So we actually start to develop a bit of a Scandinavian high there, and that's going to play a very important factor as um, as we move later on into the month. 
So very gradually as we go through the 16th and into the 17th of November, we gradually turn it colder. And in onto the 18th of November, we actually bring a bit of a low pressure into that high pressure there. So it's um it's quite it's quite hard to see, but we bring some snow into the south. So we actually get five centimetres of snow in parts of Kent. Not bad for November really. But it it very much develops because as we go through into the 19th you can see that we're there in a full blown easterly there is that Scandinavian high completely takes hold of the pattern and the 19th of November 1985 was a very cold day with many temperatures actually not getting above you know zero celsius so freezing so it's very very cold for so early in the season and actually it just carries on as we go through so into the 20th we actually get 12 centimetres of snow in the Channel Islands here. So, again, a very, very notable blast for November. And those are the upper air temperatures there for the 20th of November. You can see that the whole of the UK is in the minus 5 Celsius isotherm at 850 HPA. So, that's air that's cold enough for snow. So, pretty much everywhere, you know, wherever showers do occur, the falling is snow. Um, into the 21st of November and again we just keep that easterly going into the 22nd and into the 23rd so again it just remains very very cold for the time of year um, but quite cloudy really um, as easterlies often are at this time of year and there as we get through into the 24th that high pressure actually tries to get up towards Greenland so as we go through the 24th and into the 25th of November, we then turn those easterly winds more into a north and north easterly. So again, we get another cold shot as we go into the latter days of November. Into the 26th and the 27th, we actually start to bring low pressure into that cold air. So overnight, 27th and into the 28th we bring a band of heavy snow down over the country and that goes on into the 29th um, and we develop some pretty cold air as well in that trough so we get minus 14 celsius in parts of scotland which again is very cold for november but it actually is about to break down very quickly because if you look over spain there We've actually got high pressure building, so the Azores high is coming back. And basically, whenever you see the Azores high around Spain, it's going to turn quite mild, really. Um, and it again, as I said, it very quickly changes. So as we go through into the 30th of November, we bring quite an active cold front, sorry, an active warm front into the south. Um, but it remains bitterly cold in northern Scotland, so actually on... The 30th of November, we actually record minus 20.9 Celsius in Kinbrace in the Highlands, where in the south it's actually, you know, going up into double figures. So, you know, there's a nearly a 30 Celsius difference here between the north and south of the country. And that's something you really don't see very often at all. And that's where we finish off November 1985. We're bringing that warm front up through the country and we're basically flushing that cold air away. And then we go into December and basically what a contrast this month is to November. It's a very mild month with a central England temperature of 6.3 and it's a very wet month as well. And actually this December might actually be the reason why this winter is quite forgotten because it's such a mild December. This December is pretty much devoid of cold until the last week. Um, and there's actually flooding in the south, can you believe? So there we are on the 1st of December, and we're bringing up quite a long fret fetch southwesterly there. And it's actually exceptionally mild to start off December. So as we go through the 1st and into the 2nd of December, we actually record temperatures of 17.7 degrees in North Devon and 17.2 degrees in Bude in Cornwall which is exceptionally mild for early December. So if you like cold weather in winter, this is, you know, about as awful as 
you know, as a meteorological winter can start. I mean, if you like if you like mild weather, on the other hand, then it's obviously a great start to winter, but for the vast majority, it's not really what many people want to see to start off, you know, December. But that goes through into the third, and we keep those very high maximas. Um, and I'm not going to show all the charts for this month, actually. Um, there's no real reason for me to do so, as it's just a very, very zonal month. So as we go through to the 6th of December, we bring low pressure through the country. And into the 9th, again, it's just, you know, wet and windy. Into the 12th, again, we get another very mild shot there between the 12th and the 15th of December. Um, temperatures, again, are up into the mid-teens there. And that goes on into the 18th of December, we bring um, low pressure into the country. So again, we get more heavy rainfall hence the flooding into the south and that really goes on into the 21st of December and into the 22nd but here's where it starts to get a little bit more interesting because as we go through the 22nd and into the 23rd of December just have a look over Greenland and you can just see that we're starting to build heights and those low pressure systems are starting you know just to track a little bit further south so it's just you know, it's just little hints of a cold spell that's coming. But for now, it's it's very mild still, really, as we go into Christmas Eve. You know, there's no white Christmas at all. It's just very mild. There's the chat for Christmas Day. And we have a very warm southwesterly wind there. So, you know, no signs of a white Christmas at all. But as we get through into Boxing Day... You can see that low pressure is actually moving into the channel and we're starting to build quite a lot of high pressure around Greenland and the mid-Atlantic. So we're starting to bring a bit of a cold and northerly into Scotland now. So temperatures are falling. And actually if we had um, a very sustained cold pattern that actually would be a very, very snowy event. Um, the channel low is often known for producing some extremely heavy snow in the UK but because there's quite a lot of mild air in that low pressure it just brings heavy rain to the south really. However as it does start to clear away into the 27th you can see that we just bring more of a northerly into the country so we start to drop temperatures so December 85 if you don't like mild weather does have a bit of a silver lining to it and that goes on into the 28th and on the 29th of December, we actually record minus 14 Celsius in central Scotland and a maxima of minus 8. And that was an overnight temperature, that the minus 14. So we go from very mild to very cold at the end of December. And as we go into the 30th, we record an overnight minimum of minus 17 Celsius in parts of Scotland. So it's Again, a very, very cold end to December. And that takes us into the New Year. We actually get a bit of snow there on New Year's Eve. And as we move into January 1986, um, this is where it's going to get, again, quite interesting. Because January 86 is a very, very topsy-turvy month. It's never predominant. It's never dominantly cold or mild. It's pretty much a bit of everything really. Um, it has a central England temperature of 3.5 degrees which is quite close to average actually but it's made average because a lot of the mild spells cancel out the cold spells. So um, there we are on the 1st of January and we have low pressure around the country so we're a little bit milder to start off January but actually it doesn't last because as we go through the 2nd and into the 3rd of January the Greenland High has another little surge, so we actually bring quite a cold northeasterly wind into the country there on the 3rd and into the 4th of January. So we start off 1986 with quite a lot of frost and fog and a bit of sunshine around. It's actually a very sunny January this, I might add. And then as we go through into the 5th, this is where we're going to, you know, turn it a little bit more stormy now because we bring quite a deep area of low pressure into the northwest of Scotland. 
So as we move through the 6th and into the 7th of January, we basically start to set up quite a zonal pattern there with some mild southwesterly winds. But just notice how high pressure is, you know, lingering around Iceland and Norway. You know, just signs that there is blocking there. So cold spells can happen and they are a possibility. And actually, as we go through into the 8th, we actually get quite a chilly southeasterly wind there as southeasterlies um, come off the continent. So you get quite a lot of inversion type cold. So, you know, it's again, it's quite a chilly start to January. And that goes on into the 9th and into the 10th before by this point we actually start to enter a very, very stormy period now. And look how tight those isobars are there on the 10th. And as we go through into the 11th of January, we bring a severe gale across all of the country. That low pressure system is down to 955 millibars, which is extremely deep, even for January. And we get 70, 80 mile an hour gusts over England and even up to 90 miles an hour in Scotland. And as that clears away into the 12th of January, we actually get a bit of cold zonality here. So this middle part of January is actually um, quite thundery. Through the 13th and into the 14th of January, we bring yet another severe gale to the north of Scotland. And again, along a lot of western coastlines, we get some very thundery showers here from the cold zonality. And as that low clears away into the 15th of January, we get quite a cold gnarly shot there. So again, you know, just hinting that it could turn colder. And that goes on into the 16th and the 17th of January. We stay rather chilly, really. And again, on the 18th of January, we bring another deep storm to the northwest of Scotland. And that goes on into the 19th and the 20th of January. So it's quite wet this middle part of January, but again, you know, not overly mild. And you'd look there on actually on the 20th and you wouldn't think at all that there's any form of cold weather on the way. Um, as we are actually, you know, starting to draw closer to February now and you would be starting to see signs, you know, of a pattern change. But what's actually very remarkable, in fact, is as we get towards the end of January, we actually undergo a very, very sudden and dramatic change. So as we go through the 21st of January, we bring yet another, you know, deep low pressure system to Scotland. So again, gales are severe gales across the country. And that goes on into the 22nd and the 23rd of January, where we bring, you know, another Atlantic storm system. And then on the 24th, those winds again temporarily turn round into the north. But it's as we get to the 25th of January that this is where we, it starts to get a lot more interesting. Because the Azores High actually starts to build through the country. And as we go through the 25th and into the 26th of January, you can see that the Azores High is just trying to throw up a ridge to Scandinavia. Now... As we go further on into the 27th, you can see that the Azores High, that, that, that the Azores High is actually split in two. So the main part of the ridge is actually going back out into the mid-Atlantic, whereas the small bit that, you know, pulled off into Scandinavia is starting to merge with a big area of high pressure over western parts of Russia. So... As we go through the 27th and into the 28th of January, that Azores high in the Atlantic is just about trying to get up to Greenland. So it's merging with that Greenland high. And at the same time, as we go through to the 29th of January, we bring a low pressure system through the country. And actually, um, this brings sleet and snow for parts of north central England and northern England. So again, you know, just, just very slowly turning on into a colder pattern. And as we go through to the 30th of January, the Greenland high and the Scandinavian high start to force between that low. As you can see, that low is diving further south. So we're starting to bring winds into the east now on the 30th of January. 
And by the time we get to the 31st of January, we basically bring that ridge through the UK and we open the doors to a bitterly, bitterly cold easterly wind on the 31st. And that takes us into February 1986, the lost and forgotten very cold winter month. It has a central England temperature of minus 1.1 Celsius, which is extremely severe. It is the coldest February since 1947, and basically winds in this month are predominantly easterly for 23 days, which makes it as well the most easterly month on record, along with February 1947. And this month actually is the last severely cold month until December 2010. Uh, basically, a severely cold winter month is defined as when the central England temperature is below zero Celsius. Right, so there we are on the 1st of February and that low pressure is diving down towards the Mediterranean and we're bringing bitterly, bitterly cold easterly winds through the country off of that Scandinavian high. And as we go through into the second, that basically just intensifies further and further. Um, and I also have to say that this month's quite cloudy as well, as I said earlier on in the video, that a lot of easterlies at this time of year are often known for being extremely cloudy. Um, and actually that also helps to hinder daytime maximas. And in fact, just to prove even further how cold this month actually is, Buxton in Derbyshire actually records nothing higher than one degree Celsius in the entire month. One Celsius is the warmest month. It's, you know, daytime maximas at zero Celsius are below for pretty much everywhere. And really, just looking at that, that pattern there on the 2nd of February, it's not surprising to think why, really. And basically, as we go through the 3rd and into the 4th of February, we just keep a cold easterly wind blasting through the country. You know, the North Atlantic Oscillation is very negative. In fact, it's through the floor negative. You know, there's no sign of any Atlantic storms. It's just cold, blocked and very, very dry. And as we go through to the 5th of February, again, you know, it just stays very blocked. And by the time we get to the 6th of February, we actually start to bring the very cold air into the country as those are the upper air temperatures, the minus 10 Celsius isotherm is basically across, you know, the whole of the northern half of the UK, and the rest of the country is, you know, well within minus 7, minus 8 Celsius. So, it's bitterly, bitterly cold, and the longer those upper air temperatures stay there, basically, the colder it'll get. As we, go, as we go through into the 7th and the 8th of February, again, no real change. And then on the 9th, you can just about see that we've got that deep pool of blue over parts of Germany. And that's an upper level trough. And at the time, I, I would have presumed that this was really, you know, threatening to deliver quite a major snow event. But, you know, it doesn't really happen actually because the high pressure deflects it to the south. But it does actually bring, for a period of time, some very cold 850s into the country. You know, the minus 15 Celsius isotherm is pretty much just about touching the eastern coastline of the UK there on the 9th of February. So, you know, it's extremely cold. But as I said, that area of low pressure actually dodges us really and it's deflected south. So we stay very cold and blocked there through the 10th, the 11th and the 12th of February. Um, and actually, that might explain why it's quite a forgotten month as well, because it's not actually that snowy of a month. There are some good snow events in it, but, you know, it's not as snowy as February 1947, for example. It's just, you know, a very dry and blocked winter month. And... However, here we actually do start to bring a bit of snow because as we go through the 13th and into the 14th of February, low pressure tries to come up against that Scandinavian high. So across all of the southern half of the country, overnight 14th and into the 15th of February, 
we get a very heavy snow event. You know, snow is deposited all across the south. Um, and basically that is almost a classic channel low there. It's a little bit too far south, I'd say. But, you know, very close to being a very significant channel low there. And that clears away as we go through the 16th. But by the time we get to the 17th of February, again, we're bringing, you know, some more snow to... This is more the Channel Islands, this, actually. But again, you know, a strong easterly wind blasting through the country. It remains very cold. You know, there's no sign of an end. And as we go through the 18th and into the 19th and the 20th, again, we just revert back to cold anticyclonic conditions, the high pressure stays put, it's keeping the Atlantic at bay, and it's just a very, very cold end to the winter. And again, that carries on the 21st and into the 22nd of February. And then by the 23rd of February, you can actually see that that high pressure has migrated more over towards Greenland. So as we go through into the 24th of February, we actually get quite a cold northeasterly wind there. So we're getting very, very close now to seeing the coldest temperatures of the month. And as we go through the 25th and into the 26th of February, the temperatures drop further and further. And by the 27th, we record the lowest temperature of the entire winter, which is 21 point, minus 21.2 Celsius in Grand Town on Spey in Scotland. And that is exceptionally cold. And that's how we finish off February 1986, the very forgotten winter month, with again, you know, no change. And the cold actually drags on into the start of March, actually. Um, there on the 1st of March, we actually bring a very, very severe blizzard as low pressure comes up against that high pressure system that's basically dominated since the end of January. Um, we record minus 16 Celsius at Aviemore that day, and that actually makes it the coldest March day on record. So, you know, it's almost spring opens up in style. Basically, you know, it's an extremely cold start to the meteorological spring. However, it is, you know, going to start to um, break down now, I'm afraid, because as we go through the 2nd and into the 3rd of March, that high pressure is just very gradually starting to collapse to the south. So we're just starting to bring the westerlies now into northern Scotland. And as we get through into the 4th of March, those westerlies come through, and in fact, we get a bit more snow this day on the 4th. But by the time we get to the 5th, however, it's all over then, I'm afraid. The Atlantic screams back in and basically puts an end to the severely cold winter of 1985-86. So really, what a winter it is. We go exceptionally, we start off very cold in November. We then go very mild in December very topsy-turvy in January, and then bitterly, bitterly cold in February. So it's a very contrasting winter, this. But I hope you enjoyed this winter. Um, if you're unaware of February 86, then, you know, I'm glad I made this video. And actually, if you remember February 86 very well, I hope it's brought back some memories. Um, and before I go, just remember to keep your suggestions coming in. I'm very happy to make historic weather videos. I really enjoy making these, in fact. So, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you later.